Hello, everybody. Welcome to Who the Hell Asked. I am your host, Byron, alongside my co-host, Slade. Hey, everyone. So, uh, this week's episode is going to be a little bit different from how we usually do things. So, uh, Byron, you want to go ahead and explain how we're recording this episode this week? Yeah, so ordinarily we would be recording these offline, but we are doing uh, this one, and, and probably more in the future, uh, over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash the one underscore Byron. And, yeah, that is uh, yeah. correct. So, uh, we don't know if this is going to be like a permanent thing moving forward, or if it's just something we're doing for now, but... Uh, or, or if it's something we'll do like every so often. Basically, the way we look at it for some of the benefits of doing it on Twitch is... Uh, our viewers can tune in and kind of hear us talk about, you know, things before and after the episode, probably not related to, like, the topics in general. So yeah. people who tune into the uh, Twitch stream are going to get a little bit of additional content that you typically wouldn't get from just watching the VOD itself. So if you are interested, it is twitch.tv slash the one underscore Byron. So yeah. uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this underway. So this yeah. week is going to be a bit of a PlayStation-themed episode overall. Yeah. So uh, starting with our first bit of news here, um, the PlayStation Showcase for 2021 will be next Thursday on September 9th, 2021. Yep. And I love how Sony starts with, you've been waiting, you've been awfully patient. Yep. That's right. Patient <laughs> is, is a word you can use to describe uh, how people have felt about PS5 news. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it feels like it's been, since last year, honestly, since we've gotten, like, a PlayStation showcase, like, it's been a while. I don't even remember the last time, like, they even had a showcase, because I think uh, they shut off Final Fantasy VII Intergrade and other stuff, if I'm not mistaken, last time they did one of these. I believe so, yeah. Okay, so some things of note, uh, we're not going to see uh, PlayStation VR here. Um, yep. I, Byron stated that uh, they announced that they were going to go over it during the summer of this year. And that, you know, we're pretty much at the end of summer, kind of going into fall at this point. So yeah. it's starting to look like, you know, maybe development of VR content isn't quite up to where they thought they would be at this time. Well, you know, it's yeah, okay absolutely. because I don't care about VR content. What about you, Byron? <laughs> uh, like, the, the PSVR controllers are interesting, but yeah, this does scream to me like, oh yeah, COVID is fucked up VR developers, at least PSVR developers, and it's going to be a bit before we hear more about PSVR 2 content for the PS5. Oh, for sure. And uh, kind of just digging a little bit more into it, I imagine we're probably only going to see, like, some already announced titles from their, you know, first-party studios. And we're going to get some new titles from their third party. The main thing is they just had some content for Horizon Forbidden West at Gamescom. And, oh, uh, oh, and that's a game we're going to be getting into in a minute here. Oh, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. But uh, overall, we're not going to bore you guys with, like, a predictions video of, oh, what are we going to see and whatnot. Simply because every other YouTube channel is probably already doing it. And to be blunt with you, they're all going to predict the same things. It's going to be stuff like, you know, God of War Ragnarok and, you know, a bunch of other, you know, the exclusive titles. Like maybe Uncharted 4 or 5 or whatever number they're on. But uh, as I said, we won't bore you with, you know, the same stuff you're going to hear everywhere else. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into our... Yeah, and we wouldn't have many PlayStation predictions anyways. Yeah, so... Uh, Let's go ahead and get into our next bit of news. This is actually in regards to a uh, YouTuber that goes by the name of Austin Evans. Byron, if you want to go ahead and get started on that. Yes, so Austin Evans uh, made a video on the new PS5 revision that, as of right now, is exclusive to, I believe, just Japan and maybe Australia. So he did. So the video was titled, The New PS5 is Worse. And uh, he and his crew took apart uh, two PS5s, a new PS5, the new revision, and an old revision. And here are some of the differences. So the fan looks a little bit different, and the fins look a bit more curved and longer, as they're more connected to this center base. 
the overall weight of the cons of the PS fives are about like a 200 300 gram differential and uh, for both of these it, it was the digital version not the disc version probably the best thing about these changes is the screw the stand has a screw that on the original version could only be accessed with a fucking coin <laughs> now you can get to it with your fingers yeah. in the top rubberized or you know a flathead like a screwdriver like a normal person but go, carry on carry on <laughs> well i've seen people use like coins and stuff yeah i have too yeah but yeah so much better on the new ps5 the power draw is about the same within a, a couple watt margin of error yeah about five watts give or take yeah uh there is only two wires for bluetooth and wi-fi as opposed to the four that were in the original, and the Bluetooth wire is now blue instead of black. Probably to help differentiate it for the uninitiated to know what wire they're, you know, pulling out of where overall. Yeah, and unfortunately, Austin did not test uh, Wi-Fi speeds and Bluetooth, but... Yeah, that well, would have been some good information to know to see if, like, them having an increased amount of wires or a decreased amount in this case would have... Really yeah. improved or kind of made Why? things slightly worse, but yeah. let's was... cover some of the stuff that other people are talking about. The heat sink. Yes. So, so this is where you start to notice that things immediately look worse overall, Bart, if you want to go into the specifics for me. Yeah, so the PS5 on the left has a copper heat sink plate and the fin stack looks a bit bigger and on the left they took out the copper heat the copper heat sink base and cut a little bit off of one of the fin stacks which in austin's observations he found uh heat exhaustion from the back of the ps5s was about a five to eight degree differential and that's in, like, an open air, just like he set it on his table in the middle of the, his studio room and got the temperatures that way. And that's also not even considering, like, usage over time and whatnot. This is something that's fresh out of the box. So, yep. But you already see that stark of a difference that obviously can't mean good things long term. Um, basically, the whole gist of what we're saying is it kind of looks like they kind of cheaped out on parts that they were using to build the uh, PlayStation 5, you know, internally, overall. Yeah, and because... And this will lead to uh, yeah. longevity issues for people buying the newest PS5s versus some who had the originals on release. Like, overheating issues, primarily being amongst them, among other, among other you know, long-term conditions that there's going to be with the PS5. What? Well, potentially. We, we don't know yet, because obviously people haven't had enough time with this. This hasn't been released in other regions. So, like, those results and stuff will, will come with time. However, uh, Slade, something else happened involving, involving this story. Yeah, so apparently console fanboys got in their jimmies that this man dared. And I mean, he absolutely dared to... You know, criticize the newest version of the PS5 console because how dare he? So he would... uh, they've been doxing both him and his family and friends. Yeah, like all he was doing, all Austin was doing was basically showing his results. And his isn't the most scientific. He's not a digital foundry. He doesn't have the tools like that. But you still don't go after someone for. Basically, they're showing their work. This is what they found. And, and yeah, all that really, stuff. Just the whole thing is like really dumb because all he was doing was just making the public aware of how Sony is building new PS5s moving forward and shipping them out. And kind of giving yeah. them an idea, hey, this is what they look like internally and whatnot. So really, he was just making everybody aware. He wasn't like... Yeah. Doing anything nefarious, he wasn't trying to like 
call them out or anything like that. And yeah. as I said, console fanboys, you know, they just got their Jimmy's all in a wrestle. And they just got really upset. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, they, uh, it's not even that they just doxed him. They also doxed some of his close friends and family as well. Yeah, like and to me, like that's can... that's mm-hmm. horrible. Yeah, like you can criticize him for his uh, how he tested things, which is fair. His thumbnail and titles, but that's just the YouTube game. You you gotta make that's quick just bait. YouTube you gotta game. make bait. That's something we yeah. need to do better, honestly. But uh, overall, you know, I just think it's really, really terrible that somebody's out here trying to make good, honest, decent content for a living, and yeah. you know, this is the kind of stuff that happens to people like that. So. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, so that is uh, all the changes found in the PS5 and uh, the apparent controversy uh, that surrounded it. Uh, all speaking, right. of con- speaking of controversies... Let's talk about Horizon Forbidden West, because let's say that uh, Sony made some promises that they aren't keeping. So, yeah. for those of you that are aware, Horizon Forbidden West will be coming out February 18th, 2022 understandably yep. probably delayed from when people expected it that's not my issue with what's going no. on here but before so, we get to, uh, uh there are fucking seven different editions to this game this is they're pulling an anthem with this game so there are seven different editions to this game and let me go over them real quick so we have the standard physical editions which is you, you get your standard physical editions. Apparently, there is a launch edition, which you get the the Nora outfit, legacy outfit, and spear. We have the digital deluxe outfit, well, the digital deluxe edition, which includes a, some photo mode unlocks, some in, an in-game resource pack, digital soundtrack, digital art bu- book. And you, you get both the PS5 and PS4 versions. With that, and we'll come back to, to that little nugget of information in a moment. There's the special edition, which comes with a full game of a choice either of the PS4 or PS5 disc edition, a mini art book, and the Nora Legacy outfit. And the special edition will be $69.99 on PS4 and $79.99 on PS5. We have the big collector's edition. <laughs> yeah, like Jesus Christ. <laughs> you get a statue. You get full game and steelbook display case. You get a digital edition for both PS4 and PS5. You get uh, some more outfits. You, and you, you get everything else from uh, some of the other editions. And uh, that edition is going for $199.99. <laughs> Then we have the Regalia Edition. <laughs> it keeps going. Where you get, yeah, where you get, a, you get a replica focus and stand. You get two art cards. You get the full game steel book. You get a Regalia Tamortusk statue with Tenneth Call Warriors and alloy statue. And that edition is going for two hundred and fifty nine ninety nine. But that does also come with both the PS4 and the PS5 versions. The only versions that do not come with the PS4 and PS5 dual entitlement, which, awful name for your, like, you can have stuff, you can have it on both PS4 and PS5, but whatever. Uh, you do, it's the special editions and the launch editions are the only editions where you cannot have a PS4 copy that also gets you the PS5 stuff. Or All the right. PS5 edition. Whew, so boy. now let's talk about that last bit of info. You include. You get both the PS4 and the PS5 editions. So, previously announced when the PS5 was, you know, yet to be released and whatnot, they talked about how it, you could carry over some of your PS4 games over to your PS5 without having to repurchase them. So, yeah, like, and for, games and like the Final Fantasy VII Remake and, like, yeah. stuff like that. For yeah, some reason, 
They had also promised this for Horizon Forbidden West. Yep. I tried to find the the snippet. I might put it in editing if I remember to, but there was something that Sony said a while back about, yeah, it'll be... Now, the wording, there was some weird wording, like, oh, launch window, but, but like, this is almost outside of that launch window. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. it appears that they're going back on their word, and now, if you have the PS4 version of Horizon Forbidden West... And you upgrade to PS5, you will need to rebuy the game again. So it's pretty unfortunate that you know Sony's making you know promises that they don't keep or whatever. But the real thing is they're trying to get people to double dip on their content and spend even more money. It's just another you know example of you know shady corporations, just textbook tactics right there. So. Take that however you will. The fact yeah. that this game has like 20 billion additions with all this content. <laughs> all like, the additions. I feel like this game better be game of the year for PlayStation. Because oh. honestly, there's a real possibility that this uh, sequel to Horizon Forbidden Dawn is cucked by Zelda once again. So <laughs> I, I, I highly doubt Zelda uh, Breath of... I almost called it Ocarina of Time. Breath, uh, of, the Breath, Breath yeah. of the Wild 2, I highly doubt that will release on the same day. If it somehow fucking does, then Horizon is just the most cursed series. Either that or Nintendo is very vindictive. <laughs> like, they're super yeah. evil. And, uh, and also, Sony has had a hard... Nintendo has just done what Nintendo's done. Microsoft has been just like Game Pass. And Sony has had a hard time navigating the the PS4, PS5 landscape because now, like, obviously some of their... what they thought were going to be PS5 exclusives ended up also having PS4 versions. And there's a good reason for that. It's because there's not enough PS5s hitting the player base of the open market. I know that yeah. they've had, you know, issues with, you know... The chip shortage, as well as like scalpers acquiring a very large amount of PS5. So the amount of PS5s actually in households and being played is actually very slim overall. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. we're probably going to see PS4, you know, games and content continuing to be made over the span of honestly, maybe even the next two or three years, Byron. It might be a while before they actually start to move on to the, uh, PS5, but... Uh, yeah, there, there probably will still be some studios, including some PlayStation studios, that make PS5-exclusive games, for sure. Like, we had Insomniac make Ratchet & Clank earlier last year. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales was also a PS5-exclusive title, if I'm not mistaken? No. Okay, I so that was multi-platform. Was. Okay. I don't believe it was. I could be wrong. I thought it was for sure. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the state of where uh, Sony is currently at right now. We will continue yeah. to, you know, follow all the stories involved as they develop. And uh, Byron and I are also both looking forward to uh, the uh, showcase next week, and we will hit you with another video then. So yeah. I think that covers it for all of our PlayStation news. Byron here with a quick addendum. So... As I mentioned in the episode, Sony had previously stated in a PlayStation blog that they would be offering the free dual entitlement for Horizon Forbidden West. So if you had the PS4 version, you could upgrade to the PS5 version. As we mentioned in the episode, now you couldn't. Well, four to five hours after we recorded the episode, Sony put out a update to the PlayStation blog. Uh, that says players who purchase Horizon for Mid and West on PlayStation 4 will be able to upgrade to the PlayStation 5 version for free. Yep, they had originally offered it. They went back, and now they went back again. And they also will be applying this to the next God of War, Gran Turismo 7, and any other exclusive cross-gen PS4 and PS5 titles published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. This is a great thing, and I would assume my co-host Slade would be in 1,000% agreement that this is a great decision for Sony to make. 
and there's your addendum. Enjoy the Sonic Colors glitches. Uh, we, we have one yeah, more topic have... that we're yeah. going to cover that's not related to the PlayStation. I guess it's related to the uh, competition for a specific port. So, uh, Sonic Colors Ultimate. Yes. So, uh, seizure warning. Epilepsy warning. Uh, there will be clips played throughout this segment that may cause some viewers epilepsy. Please ta tab out. Leave the audio on for this, ep for this section of the episode. So, there have been some issues, because... For Sonic Colors Ultimate, for those who don't know, uh, Sega had a pre-order early access. Like, if you pre-ordered Sonic Colors Ultimate, I think on any platform, you were able to get the game, I think, a week or at the very least a couple days early. And uh, especially on the Switch, there have been problems with certain sections of the game having these, like, graphical glitches that have been causing se that could potentially cause certain people seizures and epilepsies and I'm showing some of them on the screen right now and it it's almost at Sonic 06 levels of just how could you fuck this up Oh yeah this is bad and I think if Sega has even like half a brain right now because let's be real I think Sonic games are probably most successful on like the Nintendo Switch overall they yep. delay the Switch version specifically. They can't afford to release this shit in an unplayable state, in my there opinion. There needs to, there needs to be a giant ass day one update. Yeah, because this is horrible, and this isn't yep, they, even close to being the worst clip on there. This is that worst clip <laughs> that's on yeah, there, as you can yeah. see on screen right now. Um, yeah, because look, look, look at this. That. Look at this shit. <laughs> how 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 did Sega think? How how did uh, Blinding Squirrels, who was the the main developer of this, think that that this is acceptable? <sighs> and there was one other person who oh oh yeah, and apparently load times at times are awful. Yeah, absolutely For, egregious. Like as uh, as this video uh is about to show. Like, holy... Like, this is bad, man. Keep in mind, real... Sonic 06 on the right, and on the left is Sonic Colors Ultimate. And yeah. I think the oh. bottom version is the Wii U version of the game. The, yeah, the, the Wii, the Wii version. version. And the top version is the Switch version. So... Yeah, oh my god. Ultimately, like, this is... looks absolutely horrible. Um, yeah. Oh. There is no... It's ands or buts about it. They definitely need to uh, delay uh, this game. Like, yeah, and, oh, and Slade, look at this one, dude. Uh, uh, someone by the name of Sam Procrastinate. Uh, so he, this happened to him on the PS5 version. And maybe this is a weird one-off, but apparently, uh, he, as he later states, apparently other people have had this issue. Uh, so he was trying to collect... The Red Rings, which is the main collectible in Sonic Colors Ultimate. And right. he had some data corruption issues. Oh dear, that's not good. Yeah, so he takes that enemy out. He got the trophy earned to reach for the stars. He got the rank. And then... And then, bada bing, bada boom, game or app error. And he had to play through it again. Oh dear. Well, that's going to negatively impact the review, I would say. Uh, well, he didn't mention it in the oh. review because he thought it was just a problem with his PS5. But apparently, there were it, this had happened to other people. Okay, so not even the uh, PS5 version escaped having issues, which... Jesus. That's terrible. Honestly, that's terrible. It sounds like this game needs a lot more time in the oven. This is a pre-release version, right? So, when does this game release again? Uh, it releases, uh, in, like, a week. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> this is the, 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 the Sega pre-order, you get to play this game early thing. And, and Sega, 
Never do that again, please. Honestly, I don't even think they're going to have these issues fixed in a week. I think this is going to plague the launch of the game for quite a bit. So, uh... uh ooh, yikes. This is definitely not a good look. Well, it just well, goes well, to well, show well, that more companies are going to continue to have issues kind of like Cyberpunk 2077 and whatnot. The industry well, well, has long gotten used to the idea of day one patches. It's terrible. Yeah. Well, who knows when this game went gold? I don't remember when this game went gold, or if it was publicly known when this game went gold. So maybe they have been working on this for a while. Who knows? But it's still just a shit situation. Especially for people with epilepsy. Like, holy shit. Like, some of this... Oh, God. Oh, God, indeed. And, like, just looking at the situation overall, it's clear that Sega has learned absolutely nothing over the past, you know... 20 years of failure after failure and issue after issue. Sonic 06 particularly should have been, you know, the coming to Jesus moment for them, but apparently not. And it's absolutely horrible. And uh, abs absolutely. This Gee. is a remaster. To put that into perspective, this is a remaster of, or an HD remake of a yeah. game they already had every asset for and stuff like that. They can't even get a remake well, this was well, well. Keep in mind, this was a Wii game before. Yeah, but like, if they can't even get a remake to function properly, what hope is there for like their new titles and stuff like that? Like, honestly, think about it. Like, Ho hope hopefully that uh, Sonic twenty twenty two doesn't doesn't have shit like this. Honestly, uh, the more I see like stuff like this, the more I'm like. You know, Sonic is just a series that's perpetually, like, rooted in mediocrity. And sometimes cursed. worse. It's cursed. Yeah, it's just, it's a very cursed it seems series. It to be cursed nowadays. <sighs> it's like, every time something feels like it finally turns out something, like, good for it. In fact, I think Sonic Colors, the original release, was the game that got them out of, like, their whole funk of making, you know, terrible Sonic game after terrible Sonic game. Yeah, it was colors and then generations. <laughs> yeah, so they had, oh, seeing geez. this game kind of fall as bad as it is really just makes me sad overall. Well, yeah, Byron, I think we've covered just about everything for this Yeah, holy, holy, holy shit. Yeah, so uh, this has been this has been Byron, and this has been Slade, and we'll we'll see you next time for we'll see you next week for. PlayStation Showcase, and whatever hell, whatever the hell else the world again. Yeah, who knew? Something might be, like, crazy big announcement that we absolutely have to cover. Honestly, uh, yeah. real talk, we might even get another Nickelodeon character. That game should be coming out within the next two months, so uh, stay tuned, yeah. everybody. But that is it. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.